Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at an infinite tower. We have 1 over square root of 2 to the power 1 over square root of 2 to the power 1 over square root of 2 dot 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 so on and so forth. Hopefully you get the idea. We have an infinite expression, an infinite tower and the bases and the exponents are all 1 over square root of 2 and this goes on forever. And we're going to try to evaluate this expression. First of all, when you have an expression like this, you can think of it in general terms, such as set this equal to something, right? So if we set it equal to x, hopefully we're going to get something from there. But let me show you the general case first. So whenever you have something like y to the power, y to the power, y dot 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 equals x, we can safely say that in most cases, hopefully, that since the whole thing is equal to x, and look at this part, which is the whole exponent, it's the same thing as the original, y to the y, to the y, to the y, so on and so forth. So this is the same as x, which implies y to the x equals x. If you raise both sides to the power 1 over x, y becomes x to the power 1 over x. Now, here's the important part. This function increases and then decreases. So it has a maximum, right? It does have a maximum at, which point do you think? Max at e comma e to the power 1 over e. So e, Euler's number, is very special here, obviously, with, uh, as with other exponential expressions like this one. And we do have a maximum. Obviously, x would be the e, and y would be the e to the power 1 over e, obviously. So what it means is that if your y value exceeds that, then you're going to get a divergent expression, which is not going to converge, okay? Now, let's just quickly take a look at the graph of two functions, which kind of represents the solution to this type of equation. Make sense? Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look because later on when we uh, look at the numerical value, this is going to make more sense. But you ho hopefully had an idea what the answer is going to look like. But let's continue. So we have 1 over square root of 2 to the power 1 over square root of 2 to the power 1 over square root of 2, so on, so on and so forth, equals x and we set it equal to x and by doing that the whole exponent becomes x same thing and we get something like this 1 over square root of 2 to the power x equals x awesome now at this point you're thinking is this an exponential equation or a linear well it's kind of both it could be called a non-standard equation because you can't just solve it by standard methods you have to use a very special function have you guessed it Okay, let's continue. So I'm going to have to manipulate this expression a little bit because that's an expression. Let's go ahead and do this. Write this as 1 over square root of 2 to the power x equals x. And then multiply both sides by root 2 to the power x, which gives us x times root 2 to the power x equals 1. Nice. We kind of want to put these two together, the polynomial piece and the exponential piece. We want to put it together because later on we're going to turn this into something like t e to the t and we're going to apply a very special function. Okay, let's do it. So first of all, notice that square root of 2 can be written as 2 to the power 1 half. All right. And then we multiply the exponents. That's the rule. And now take a look. Does this look like t e to the t? Well, there's no e here, but we'll take care of that. And obviously the base or the coefficient here, the multiplier, is not the same as the exponent, but they're pretty close. One thing we can do though, uh, take care of the base first, because you do want a base of e, but we have a 2. How can I take care of that? Well, 2 can be written as e to the power ln 2, right? That's an identity, and of course that's true for pretty much any x value or y value that you can place 2 with. So let's go ahead and write the 2 as e to the power ln 2. And then we're going to raise it to the power x over 2 equals 1. And now these exponents are going to be multiplied again. So it's going to be e to the power x over 2 times ln 2 equals 1. Great. Now we're getting closer to the form t e to the t, right? Aren't we? So always keep that in perspective. I got the e, but I didn't get the t, right? This is my t since... That's more complicated than the t here. This is not t, but this is my t. And I kind of need to make this look like t. Make sense? Okay. 
What is this? This is coffee. Maybe if that's tea, this could be coffee. Anyways, get the idea. So here's what we need to do. First of all, we have x over 2, which means we need a factor of 1 half. And we do need a factor of ln 2, which means multiply both sides by 1 half ln 2. Make sense? When you multiply x by 1 half ln 2, it's just going to be x ln 2 over 2. And this can be written as e to the power of x ln 2 over 2. I just wrote it that way. But remember, we multiply both sides by this. So 1 times that is going to be ln 2 over 2. Or you can write it as 1 half ln 2. doesn't matter. No big deal. So far, so good. I hope you're following. Now is the time to apply our hocus pocus mathematic function, which is called Lambert's W function. So let's talk about it briefly. Lambert's W function is a very special function, and I talked about it in very many other videos. And sometimes I get complaints about not using it all the time. I guess I'll probably use it sparingly. Anyways, Lambert's W function is basically the inverse function for t e to the t. Because if you apply t to the t, Lambert's to t u to the t, you're going to get a t. Make sense? So it kind of takes this as an input and gives you the t you're looking for. It's also called the product log because inverse of the exponential is log, but this is a product. Make sense? Now, when you apply Lambert's W function to t to the t, that's what you're going to get. And we have exactly that. Look at this. This is t. This is e to the t. Get it? OK, let's go ahead and apply it on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and put a big W here and a big W here. I don't have much room, but hopefully it'll fit. And then we're going to proceed with the definition. When I apply Lambert's W to this, it's going to give me x ln 2 divided by 2. But on the right hand side, unfortunately, we're not getting something nice. We're just going to leave it like Lambert's W function of ln 2 over 2. What are we going to do with this though? Let's erase this part and continue. We are supposed to get to x, so we can do a little bit of algebra. Multiply both sides by 2 and divide by ln 2, right? Let's multiply by 2 first. That's going to give us 2w ln 2 over 2. And then we're going to go ahead and divide by ln 2 to get x by itself. That's going to give us x equals 2w ln 2 over 2 divided by ln 2. Make sense? And guess what? This is approximately equal to, right? Let me go ahead and give you an approximate value. This is roughly 0 0.766665. So that's kind of like an interesting number because there are, um, you know, sixes back to back. But that's pretty much what the answer is going to be. Now, to find Lambert's W function of this number, you can kind of uh, plug into a calculator such as Wolfram Alpha, and you can use the the function product log and then put the number in there, multiply by 2, divide by ln 2, and you're going to get the answer. Make sense? Okay, great. So this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.